I know there are just so many choices uh, for information security certifications uh, in the industry right now, and it's just very hard to boil down what are the top most certifications. So uh, in this uh, video, we're going to discuss uh, the top certificate from my perspective uh, based on the users we have on this channel and the topics that we generally discuss. I'm sure there are tons of uh, certificates out there which might be a better fit for you guys, uh, and, and I'm happy to provide you my response, like if you reach out to me via comments on on uh, like you know uh, which part is good for you but i here i've tried to uh, like you know cover mix of everything uh, including like cloud uh, core level like the basic cert uh, with the media medium or senior level certifications and so i have got mixed of uh, and of course like you know choosing 4 out of uh, 100 is very very difficult task but uh, hopefully uh, you would like my analysis so so let's dig in uh, first, let's spend like you know a couple of minutes and why information security and and why do we why do we even care about like you know certifications? So information security is one of the most uh, I guess prestigious and and well paid uh, job in the industry right now. Like if you look for any top uh, jobs in the IT, you would find the uh, infosec at least on in top five or top three. In this example, you can see like it's in top four. Uh, the fourth rank, and if you even see the median salary paid by uh, this is in the U.S. dollar, but if you see this across the globe, the generally salary you would get for the information security is much better than any other uh, job. Uh, the next thing is uh, you also get to work with uh, like you know different teams if you're working in infosec you will be working with the legal you'll be working with the software developers uh technical project managers sometimes you'll be also talking with the cto ceos so it's it's like you know i i i feel very excited uh, with my job so uh, i just want to share that with you now next thing is uh how do you choose the right certification so there are multiple ways you can do that one uh, first one, you want to evaluate what industry needs, and that I'll show you uh, in the next uh, slide how you do that. But generally, I like you know whatever the uh, role I'm in or, or whatever the position that I'm looking for, I would do some uh, uh, research on what the industry is looking for based on few job description, and, and based on that, I'll, I'll go with my certification. And also, if it provides good value, not just the certification is good enough, but if it provides some value, that then it is much better. Uh, the next thing is uh, cloud is bigger than ever. So, uh, of course, more and more, uh, like, you know, non-digital uh, jobs or non-digital business are also moving to the cloud. And that's why you have more and more requirement for the InfoSec. And then also, of course, uh, there is more requirement for the uh, cloud security as well. And, of course, due to this COVID pandemic, uh, a lot of businesses are moving to digital. Uh, that means we'll have a lot of software developers building the applications, and then we have we need InfoSec personnel to secure such applications. So uh, we would have, like, you know, pretty much uh, all of it uh, combined uh, to see uh, raised needs in the cybersecurity. Now, uh, why, uh, like, you know, why do you get the cert? Uh, so, cert will help you uh, find a job. So, when I was new into the industry, uh, of course, uh, I I got like, you know, CES certification, and and that helped me uh, land a job in the information security. Of course, I had the knowledge, but uh, certification always always helps. Uh, then, uh, uh, like, you know, you can get the better salary because uh, when you have certification uh, sometimes when the uh, when uh, like you know I'm, I'm reading out some of the uh, resumes uh, to hire uh, to hire for my company i would say oh this person has certification that means he, uh, he's certain that he has some knowledge over the people who does not have a knowledge and then of course you have better chance of negotiation of the salary as well so that's why uh, like you know, that that always helps. And then there is a commitment um, when you invest your time and money into the uh, like uh, the recruiter or the manager, hiring manager would see that that you are or not just the hiring manager, but if, even if your existing job, the manager would see whether you are like you have invested so much time and money towards getting the certification that you are committed uh, towards your goal and and learning about the infosec. So these are uh, some high level reasons why you should even think about the certifications now one of the things i generally do is like you know look for uh, what are the certification required so for example this role uh, 
uh, it, it says like you know CISSP is preferred, uh, cloud computing is preferred, and then specifically they, they would also mention like you know certifications which are required for this job. Now, if you meet some of these criteria, then it's easier that you would at least go past the one first hurdle, which is getting the phone interview or getting at least recruiter call you by looking at your resume. If you don't have any of the certification, there are there are very less chances that someone would call you by just reading through your experience. So uh, that way also uh, certification really helps. But then this will also help you in terms of which certifications are right for you based on the role that you're looking for. Uh, so definitely do that analysis. So let's dig into the first certification which I'm going to recommend is the CompTIA Security Plus. And the reason uh, I recommend this is because this is the entry-level certification. Uh, so anyone who wants to start into the uh, or get into the information security or, or who have recently started into the security, I think this will be a good certification to learn about different domains and also get some uh, knowledge. Uh, although it's just a multiple choice exam and it's an entry level cert, but of course it's going to help you immensely by by like you know learning about the different domains that the information security has to offer. Now CompTIA has a core like have divided their courses into their or certification into different uh, levels, and one of them is core. So as you can see here. In the core level, we have uh, IT professional, IT fundamentals, uh, A plus, network plus, and then the security plus. So uh, once you have all of these, then you can say, yeah, I'm, I'm like, you know, I've got the core knowledge, and and then you can move on to the next level. So uh, this is a good uh, certification in a way for the entry level, and also it's not very uh, time consuming or or very lengthy because as you can see, it's a 90 minutes. Uh, uh, exam with the 90 questions maximum, you could get less than that. That means one and a half hour. Uh, the domains that you learn about is the threat attacks and vulnerabilities, then you also see technologies and tools, uh, architecture and design. So these are some of the things that uh, it will be helpful if you know in the future when you are uh, taking all like a mid or senior role to define, like, you know, to assess the architecture or design of certain application. Identity and access management is very huge, and it's part of any certification that you would take. So these are some of the really good domain and the risk management, right? So uh, uh, in security, we always say the decisions are always made based on the risk uh, reward. So if the risk is higher, then we want to mitigate uh, using the controls and bring the risk lower. So you would also learn about the risk management. Then the cryptography and public key infrastructure, PKI. Uh, this is an interesting topic. We have done a couple of videos in this channel about the encryption. So uh, if, you are, if you are curious to know about it, uh, feel free to check it out. Uh, next thing, uh, as I said, like it's a multiple choice, and uh, sometimes you also get the performance-based questions. So, like you know, you would uh, you'd be asked to move around objects on the screen. Uh, the minimum score to pass this exam is 750 out of 900. So it is quite challenging, I, I would say. Uh, but uh, again, it's just 90 questions, so uh, it should be quick enough. The latest exam that uh, that available right now is 601, which was released on November 2020, uh, probably a couple of months ago, and the exam fee is uh, $370 uh, US dollars. So it's not that expensive, uh, but yeah, definitely recommended for the entry level. Uh, similar to CEH, I, I would also like you know, I was also juggling between the CEH and Security Plus, but I have seen more demand of Security Plus uh, over the CEH. All right, next one. Uh, we're going to talk about the CISSP. Now we are jumping from uh, entry level to mid or senior level uh, certification. Now this one is requires like you know three hours, and I forgot to mention the Security Plus does not have any uh, prerequisite that you need to have uh, to appear uh, like you know to get the certification. While in the CISSP, you need to have five years of uh, security background or experience uh, to get the certification. Now here the uh, like you know, it's three hours. Uh, you get between 100 and 150 questions, and it's a mid to senior level. Uh, I, I wouldn't recommend this to just to start your career uh, for the infosec. I would rather uh, suggest you go with the CISA if you want to get into the compliance. But a lot of managers and and senior level executives uh, uh, you would find with the CISSP. Now, what domains do you learn? 
So here, as I said, like identity access management would be part of every, uh, like you know, uh, every cert that you would take. Then the security assessment and testing, security operations, software development security, security risk management, asset security, and communication network security. Now, if you see all of these domains, you would realize that it touches on the various domains. You would also learn about these domains into other cert, but this CSSP goes in depth in these domains because you you need to know about all of this, and that's the reason it's a mid to senior level because when you work when you work through like you know a few years into IT security, you might have gone through some of these domains or experience in the real world, and that's why when you uh, actually go up here for this exam or, or learn about the certification, it's easier because you have already uh, worked on some of this stuff. Now, uh, uh, this is, again, multiple choice questions, uh, and uh, minimum score is 700 out of, um, uh, like, you know, 1,000. And the certification is quite expensive compared to other one, but, again, it's a mid to senior level, and, and it holds a lot of value. And and this is the CSSP is something I would recommend for anyone, uh, be it in the technical or non-technical domain, because this is a really really good certification uh, and uh, appreciated by pretty much all the industry. So uh, if you have the certification on your resume, uh, I'm guaranteed that uh, you would be uh, given a priority over the others. All right. Uh, we talked a lot about the cloud, and when I was looking at the cloud certifications, there are quite a few. There, there, is, there is from IC Square, there is from Isaka, there is also uh, from CCSP, or, or so th there, there are a lot of certifications out there. But uh, it, it was tough choice. But then, uh, if I look at the cloud business, then AWS is the top uh, with the top, uh, I guess, uh, ranked because um, a lot of uh, like. There, there are a lot of coverage by the AWS, and the reason I've chosen the AWS Certified Security is because uh, I think most of the time, uh, if if you are if you are applying for a job, and you would see companies using the cloud, at least in in like you know uh, US or India, uh, you would see that uh, uh, they're using either multi-cloud, like multiple like GCP or Azure and AWS, or they are using AWS. I have hardly seen uh, companies using uh, only one cloud like Azure or, or GCP. That's why I was more inclined uh, with the AWS Certified Security. Uh, again, this is like you know multiple choice question. It has uh, three hours just as CSSP. Uh, again, uh, there is no prerequisite, but it is required that you have uh, two years of uh, working knowledge in the cloud and security. You need a 75, uh, 750 as a passing score, uh, which is uh, not that difficult, I would say, if you have worked uh, in the AWS before. And if you hold the associate certification, then it, it makes it uh, very easier. And again, the cost of the certification is not that much. Uh, it's like $300, but this is a specialty certification, so it's, it holds tremendous uh, value uh, if, you have, if you have one. Now the modules you're gonna cover in this uh, certification is incident response. So here you will uh, demonstrate, like you know, how how do you know that uh, to configure AWS for abuse notice and evaluate suspected compromised instance or expose access keys, or how to uh, define your incident response plan and configure automated alerting. Then in the design and implement, uh, like you know, in the logging, he, you would of course for any security logging and monitoring uh, is required for forensic analysis. So here you will see, you will learn how you troubleshoot security monitoring and alerting. And then next one is infrastructure security. This one holds the most weightage in the exam. I think it's believe I believe it's 26 percent or so. So make sure you pay good good attention to this module while you are learning. And there are a lot of uh, like you know online training uh, from a Cloud Guru or Linux Academy, uh, which you can sign up. We have also covered some uh, some topics in in our channel. And if I get more chance, then I'll I'll cover some extra stuff as well from this uh, certification. But yeah, uh, that's that's the training available. So here in the infrastructure security, you'll uh, learn how to design it. Edge security on AWS, and then how do you secure infrastructure, uh, then VPCs, and all those things. 
again identity and access management uh, uh, here you will uh, learn and 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 implement like auth authentication authorization system uh, troubleshoot those systems uh, using the aws um, for the aws resources and the last one is data protection uh, here we are talking about the encryption uh, in transit at rest key rotation key management and troubleshooting so uh, there are some interesting topics that you will learn uh, when you go through training uh, for this one now the last certification i have chosen is oscp uh, because this is different than all of the other three that we have discussed so far uh, this is uh, like you know uh, a non traditional exam so so far all of three we have seen is multiple choice question but this one has a, a lab so this is a more practical uh, you have to uh, like you know uh, uh, like i have i have heard i don't possess the oscp but i i have many friends who do have this and and i've heard their experience this is a most challenging exam than uh, all the other that we have discussed so far there are no prerequisite but you must complete the offensive security penetration testing with the kali linux so that's their prerequisite and and the reason it's very challenging exam because you have to really know the technical aspect like you cannot just read the books or go through training and answer any multiple choice a b c d questions here you n need to know how you can break into the network and and uh, how do you get the shell access and 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 then also exploit some application vulnerabilities along with the network vulnerabilities so it's very challenging compared to and of course a 24 hour exam is always challenge going to be challenging than a 3 hours exam a good thing is the certification never expires so once you have it uh, it's good for the lifetime at least for now and then uh, of course cost is higher but uh, you get easily paid for a bit of like you know for, uh, once you have the certification so uh, I, I would definitely recommend this one over any other uh, like you know uh, sense course that that's like you know more uh, theoretical so here uh, anyone looking for the pen test job uh, then this is uh, like a must have uh, certification now the required skills uh, uh, here uh, you need to know information gathering techniques of course uh, in order to exploit any network or application you need to first gather information so this pretty much follows like you know uh, the steps that we have for any pen testing methodology now tool writing and modify exploit code you need to know how you can write the tool uh, and then uh, of course there are widely available exploits on the internet but then you would also need to know how to tweak the exploit so it can work on your system or, or your target so you need to have that knowledge uh, pretty much python or ruby on rails knowledge will be much more helpful then it also requires the application vulnerabilities so you need to know how to exploit sql injection access file inclusion vulnerability and so, so forth uh, then uh, bypass firewall techniques uh, that's again uh, oops sorry bypass firewall techniques that's again uh, very much uh, uh, with tunneling techniques and uh, yeah, i think we we saw some of the exercise cheat sheet uh, in in our in our channel on the access uh, series how do you bypass some of the filters so similarly you need to know how do you bypass uh, firewall techniques and uh, prop the services uh, that on the target and then you have to be creative uh, and lateral thinking skills so uh, when you are given 24 hour lab and you have to break through something you have to be creative uh, if you are one uh, method does not work on exploitation you have to think of the other one so these are some of the skills that you need uh, to pass or crack the OSCP I would say uh, that's that's pretty much it I want to discuss uh, thank you so much for your time and, and uh, I hope you like this video please hit the subscribe button if you do and hit the thumbs up button uh, and share videos with your other uh, like-minded security professionals and 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 please do share your knowledge uh, posting the comment uh, what do you think from your perspective which are the top certifications or, or which do you have in mind to grab in 2021 uh, thank you so much again and I'll I'll see you guys next week